Hey everybody, Bam Collectibles here today, not doing just one, not two, but three statue unboxings today. <laughs> If you're watching this video the day it goes live, we just hit 175,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined with me along on this journey. And to those that have not already decided to subscribe to the channel, I want to encourage you to do so. But today is about Naruto versus Sasuke in three epic statue unboxings. I cannot wait to show you. I tell you, I I'm not ready. I don't know if you're ready. My wallet wasn't ready, but my gosh, here we are. And let's dive right in. We're going to skip looking at the boxes go right into the statue. And for the first base here, we can see it's a very basic plate style round base. We have a felt pad on the bottom so it can slide around with ease. Zooming in, we have that classic headband nameplate and then also this nice texture that goes all around, kind of to break up from the monotony of just a black plain base. This is the area that's carved out inside that an effect piece is going to sit into later with a large magnet, very huge round magnet which is very much justified when you see how large this effect piece that it's going to support is. Flipping it over on the bottom, we'll see there is that notch that fits into place in that large round magnet. I don't even think I've seen a magnet that's that large. Flipping this back over, we'll see they did an amazing job with creating the wave looking effects on here. Now there's going to be something that's standing on top of all these waves that's causing them to go crazy like this, but we'll take a look at that later. There is several different notches sculpted on here. They're going to be supporting those individuals. Overall, this is a very ambitious project. They took on a sculpt, something so large, it looks a bit odd on this tinier base, but if you notice here, it's got a little bit of a wave going on. It's actually like a yin-yang base where it's gonna to connect to another one later. Like I said, something is gonna be standing on top of this water and it is none other than Kuruma himself. Now, because this is the final battle, he is in his nine tails chakra form. Something that we don't get to see often enough in statues. Flipping this over though, underneath of the neck, we'll see a little bit of a sloppy, I don't know if it's the paint job or the way that they glued the head on there, but there are certain aspects of the statue where the paint job is just a little sloppy. Uh, you know, KM altogether is hit or miss with their quality or quality control with the statues that they do. Freaking who knew how ripped this box was underneath, right? For the most part though, all the different markings that are around his body were well done as far as the paint job goes. He has these three holes in the backside here that are gonna be supporting the extremely large tails that are gonna be attached on after this. Crazy enough, he only attaches to the base with one notch on one of the front hands. Now, I did mention before that KM Studio can slack off a little bit, and I will mention that the paint job for the black lines on this are kind of an area they could have improved on. We have this notch here at the base of the tail that's gonna help it attach to the backside and also really just allow it to mount into place safely. Here's exactly what I was talking about. You can see it's just not that clean. Thankfully, as you kind of zoom out from the statue, you cannot see this stuff. You know, that's what I say about most details with statues is, you know, I'm not looking at my statues on a daily basis from two inches away, right? I'm looking at them from at least three, four, sometimes five feet away. And these kind of details just totally fade in the distance. I did want to mention the way that the tails connect together is pretty ingenious. So it's all a large circular shape. This is more of a half circle and the others are quarter circles, but I love how dynamically sculpted these tails are. Now it's really cool at this point of view right here. It's exactly how the Sasana was looking at, you know, Kuroma as this battle was going on in the water. One of the main reasons why I decided to get this statue is because it really brings to life this epic large scene that happened in the show. To make this feel like a larger scale statue, we have a smaller scale Naruto that they sculpted to go with it. Everyone that I talked to though did have the issue where the wrist did snap upon arriving, either when trying to install it or just in the box naturally. So what I had to do is I had to reinforce it by gluing it back on, which took a lot of doing, and then I had to reinforce it with some epoxy glue. Uh, so that was really tough, but thankfully it did hold on finally. But his actual like character sculpt itself, the paint job, again, it's not perfect, but it shouldn't have to be from the distance that you're viewing it from. But I love that they decided to sculpt this in the actual diorama with him. Here's the notch on his foot which will allow him to connect to this portion of the base right there just to mention epoxy glue is a lot stronger than something like super glue but takes a longer time to dry if you ever have a your curious questions about how that works you can always message me and ask and i'll try to get back to you about that 
But hey, pretty awesome, right? How this all comes together, really making it feel like a larger scale battle. This is something very unique that I've never seen done before in a statue. So good job, KM. Here's an even further step back so we can see this. Now let's jump on into Sasuke. My boy's base is basically exactly the same. The notch is a very different shape compared to how Naruto's was, but this is that. And then we're gonna just briefly go over the actual water piece because again, it's just a large hunk of resin with some waves painted on there. We have a lot of different notches going on here as well. You can see those magnets that are gonna help hold the Sasano into place. For those that might be curious, these actually do weigh about 15 to 20 pounds each because they are solid resin. Because Sasuke's Susana stands so tall, they actually sculpted him without the bottom portion of his legs. So it looks like he's actually popping out of the bottom of the water. One side has that notch with the magnet and the other has that smoother surface with the impacted magnet, but the rest of the body looks fantastic. Good coloration as well with the purple shade. On the back, we'll see there's an area where the wings are gonna be installed on the sides. Of course, we have some areas carved out for the hands and obviously the neck joint is gonna connect there. But overall, really good looking turned out. And the way that this pops on, look, look. Uh, how cool does that look, right? For some odd reason, and you're gonna have to let me know in the comments below if you agree with me, the shade of this looks more of a pinkish color than the purple that we saw that was on the body. The sculpting of it looks great. Uh, again, the only weird odd thing is the coloration of that, but we have another steel rod just like Kurama's tails on there. And I love all the different textures that go within the wings. It kinda of looks like towels on roofs almost. And to make the wings 100% accurate, they sculpted these handles. You know, they always look like the handles of a blade or a katana separately, and they just attach on by friction. So you just kind of shove them in there, twist, and the friction holds it right into place. You know, the more I look at it, the more I actually like the fact that the wings are a little bit different shade of purple because it allows them to stand out and not just be a giant purple blob of resin. Here we have the head sculpt. You know, it's always crazy to think that the actual characters in the show should be the same size as the jewel on their forehead. So it's crazy ever to imagine someone actually creating a scaled version of a Susano and a character together because the character would be so tiny, right? For the arms on this statue, you actually get two different options in which you can switch them in and out but depending on what your preference is going to be. And this hand right here is gonna be more of the attack stance. Just like each part of the statue, it does connect with the magnet and this hand is hollowed out because it's gonna be able to hold one of two swords included. I love it when companies give you options to display and here we have the actual sword. It almost looks like it's you know, a chakra blade itself the way that the flames are kind of going up and down and the quality of this is really nice too. I love the shading that they chose for it. Unfortunately, the second blade did not arrive in the same condition as this first. I did have a break around the handle area where the hilt is. It is always unfortunate when a statue arrives broken, but I always try to do my best to repair it and fix it myself. I did what I did before with Naruto and I super glued it and then added a layer of epoxy glue on there. And I swear, if you don't get close up to it, you cannot even tell that it actually happened. And so this is why I encourage people to learn how to repair your statues if at all possible, right? If it's a major break that you can't, contact the reseller, but if you can try to fix it yourself, definitely do so. It is a break that I'll likely forget even happened because of how good it actually turned out the repair. And here we have the second set of arms. This is going to be more of a defensive position as we see you will install this and get the swords connected back in there. We'll see the other ones were more stretched outward while these are gonna be kind of in, a, in an X or cross like fashion as if he's about to block an attack. Now let me know in the comments below, which would you prefer if you own this statue? Would you want him in that defensive position or would you want him to be in the attack position? Just like Naruto, we have a miniature version of Sasuke. Now I like this one better. I think it's because his Chidori isn't blocking in a, in a, a huge amount of his body. With Naruto, the Rasengan blocked a little bit too much. So details, again, aren't that great, but these are really small. If I had to put a scale to it, I don't know, these would probably be like, 120th scale maybe maybe 110th scale 115th it's hard to really put a scale to it but they're definitely not your normal you know standard 1 8th 1 6th scale that we're used to seeing with a lot of other statues that i showcase on the channel 
Man, I'm super happy with how this thing turns out. You know, we have Sasuke here thrusting forward with the Chidori head first and backing up. Here's how the statue looks. Again, super, super epic. How it feels like the Sasano is actually popping from out of the water. And then also we have both statues here together so you can see how they look separate. It does look kind of odd because they're on their separate bases. But one cool thing is KM Studio gave us a base where you could put both water effects on here. But my gosh, man, they had to make this base about 40 to 50 pounds in order to support everything. I love the front of the base, right? We have Madara and the first Hokage on the front from the final Valley statues. Looks incredible. And then we have this first part here. This one goes on first. The other one kind of fits right on top. Custom LED lights may have become somewhat of an addiction when it comes to me seeing clear resin. So here is one of my strands of LEDs. What I plan to do is actually take these off of here and we're gonna see how this looks if I string up the bottom. Now keep in mind how I do my custom LEDs is it's a bit, I don't, I don't wanna call it lazy, but the way that I have to go about it, I can't you know drill things into them to get them into place. I just tape them on. And so I'm gonna be speeding through this real quick so we can skip through and see how this looks. I'm actually not sold on the fact that I like LEDs with this, but the fact that it's going to make the water, my, my whole goal actually was to make the water feel and look like it's rippling and moving. Thankfully, underneath of the base where the water sits, there are some gaps so these LEDs won't be rubbing up against resin too much. And they actually still do magnetize because it's such a large magnet that's on the bottom of the base. I was a bit nervous on this one. I wasn't sure how it would actually turn out, but I think it turned out pretty amazing. Here is it in the dark. For those interested, this is the LEDs I use in my Amazon affiliate links. In the description, you can check out uh, those in the custom section. But hey, let's go ahead and take a step back. And here is the full statue all together. Super mega epic. Awesome. I love it. And uh, one thing I wanted to point out is on the foot, of Kurama. He does kind of hover above. It doesn't fully key into place. I'm not sure if that's just mine. And also my Naruto doesn't sit fully flush into here. He leans a little bit down. I'm going to try to put some blue tack in there to make that settle a little bit better. But hey, let me know in the comments section below. What do you think? Does it look better with the LEDs turned on or should I keep them off? What do you think? I mean, I'm probably going to keep them on in the end, but some people might not prefer the LEDs, maybe to overexpose things a bit too much. But I like the feeling that it brings to an already dynamic feeling statue, right? So with KM Studios, Naruto versus Sasuke done, I wanted to throw in a bonus of two statues at the end here that I'm gonna be showcasing with this whole display to make it come to life. So many years ago, for I believe it was Storm 3, Sume came out with a Naruto versus Sasuke, their final fight where they're clashing together. And I actually owned these many years ago and I had sold them off and I had an amazing deal come my way where I was able to pick up both of them from a dear friend and I, I could not ignore it. So I did jump on them because I had an awesome idea to put these two statues together. But here is the dust cloud particle that's included. There's a magnet on the bottom. That's how those are kind of attaching in a place. You can see the round insert there. Eventually, I plan on doing a video titled Top 5 Statues I Regret Selling. These statues here would be on that list if it wasn't for me picking them back up. But let me know your thoughts if you'd love to see a video about this. This specific piece is very important. It attaches with that steel rod and that notch on there will allow Naruto to fit on the actual base. Man, I tell you, this statue was ahead of its time when it came out. The sculpting that they did, the company, Sume, is just legendary. I love how accurate they depicted this actual moment, this scene when Naruto and Sasuke are clashing arm to arm. I love how the bottom of the outfit here is all frayed because that's how it was when he was in his nine tails chakra mode. And then as we spin towards the front, you know, it sounds weird to say, but I love it when we see the inside netting part of his outfit because that's something we really don't ever get to see. I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, wait, what the heck? He actually has something underneath of there? One of the reasons why I said this statue was ahead of its time is look at the emotion that they captured on Naruto's face. It's just incredible. The headband was sculpted separately, but man, one of my favorite moments in the show and sculpted so perfectly by Sume. A very simple statue, uh, easy to put together, but we'll slide him over. And you know, to kind of put into context what a good deal I got on these statues is I think I originally paid, when these came out, they were like, 
280 or maybe 300 each and sometimes they can sell for upwards of 400 each now and from a friend he sold them to me for $200 each so I know that's still expensive but uh, you know compared to what I would pay if I were to get them on the market thank goodness it was a lot cheaper the other thing too that you have to watch out for this set is there was a lot of bootlegs running out the PVC or plastic recasts where people made the same exact statues, made molds, and they're just cheaper looking all around. Now, I'd be curious to kind of see those side by side, right? The recast versus authentic. Maybe that's a video I'll do in the future. Not sure how much people are enjoying those these days, but I have a really cool one coming in the near future. I think it might be themed after Sasori. Here we have Sasuke, just like the KM statue. I have to say Sasuke probably is my favorite of the two as far as how they dynamically sculpted him. It probably has something to do with his outfit too, right? Sasuke's outfit is just always extremely cool looking. That belt piece was sculpted separately, as you see, magnetically attaches itself. That notch on the back with the magnet inside is also how he'll attach here. But I gotta say, dude, Sume did so good with these. The paint job alone is extremely clean too. You won't find a flaw on these statues. One of my favorite parts is the hair sculpting on this. I love it when they sculpt Sasuke's hair where there's not much texture. It's all kind of like smooth and flat. I think that's really accurate depicting how his hair looks in the show. Being that this statue is about four to five years old, I gotta say it stood the test of time. Not all statues look good, you know, four to five years later. Sometimes they, you know, what I would call they age out, but these really did keep up extremely well. For those that may be wondering who normally watch my videos, you know, what, what kind of card are you gonna display with these statues? Unfortunately, the card series stopped around the war arc, so there is no cards that depict these characters like this. So I probably won't be displaying anything near these, though I wish there was some. Maybe someone will make some custom cards. All right, if you stuck around this long, this is the final display and setup here. We have, you know, the big battle going on in the background with this small, you know, clash in the center. And then we also have kind of a zoomed out version with these larger statues, which we can see the, you know, clash going on in more of a larger scale, or at least how that fight and battle begun. I hope you enjoyed today's epic statue unboxing and showcase. I will see you in the next video, everybody. And as always, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.